Welcome to the first of many webinars that will be hosted by the Smart Growth Information Clearinghouse. The Smart Growth Information Clearinghouse is a project of the Smart Growth Network, is funded by the U.S. EPA Office of Sustainable Communities, and managed by the Maryland Department of Planning. SmartGrowth.org is your one-stop on the web for the most current information on effective growth, development, and preservation practices. We provide timely news and information about events, funding opportunities, awards, and resources. Today, we present Why Do Old Places Matter? Inspired by the National Trust for Historic Preservation's series of essays exploring the role that historic places play in everyday life, this webinar examines the fundamental and pragmatic reasons that old places are good for people. We will hear from uh, Thompson M. Mays, or Tom, and he will tell us why old places matter. Dr. Mike Poe will explain how character-rich buildings and blocks offer solutions for more sustainable cities. And then Donovan Ripkema will discuss the economics of historic preservation. Let me introduce our first presenter. Tom Mays is Deputy, Ge Deputy General Counsel for the National Trust for Historic Preservation and has specialized in both corporate and preservation law since he joined the trust in 1986. He is author of many articles relating to and has lectured widely on preservation easements, shipwreck protection, historic house museums, the Americans with Disabilities Act, preservation public policy, and the importance of old places. For many years, he taught historic preservation law at the University of Maryland graduate program in historic preservation. A recipient of the Rome Prize in Historic Preservation, Mr. Mays authored a recent essay, series of essays titled, Why Old Places Matter. Mr. Mays received his bachelor's in history and his JD from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and a master's degree in writing from Johns Hopkins University. Tom, welcome and thank you. Thank you, John. I'm delighted to be with you here today and to talk about why old places matter to people and to their communities. I'd also like to thank the Smart Growth Information Clearinghouse for asking us to speak and for arranging this webinar. I'm particularly honored to share this webinar with Don Ripton and Mike Poe, two of the rock stars of the preservation world. At the outset, I'd like to emphasize that I think that smart growth principles and historic preservation are not only compatible, but are utterly intertwined and interdependent. When I review the 10 principles of smart growth, I'm struck by the fact that many of these principles can best be achieved with old places. When we think of places that are distinctive and that have a sense of place, they are almost always old, or they are modeled on something old. When we think of walkability and diversity, old places are the places that model walkability and diversity. When we think of how to preserve farmland and open space around our communities, it can best be achieved by strengthening the already existing older communities. Preservation and smart growth are flip sides of the same coin. Thanks to the National Trust and the American Academy in Rome, I've spent the past two years researching and writing about why old places matter to people. Why? Or as someone posted online recently, kind of crazy that we even have to ask the question of why old places matter. I proposed the project because I didn't think the reasons that old places matter are widely recognized. If anything, they're under-recognized. The result of the project has been a series of essays published through the Preservation Leadership Forum of the National Trust. You can read all the essays and a related issue of the Preservation Forum Journal by going to the Preservation Leadership Forum blog, and they will also be posted on the Smart Growth Network webpage after this webinar. Let me say that I don't think that there are a set number of reasons that old places matter to people. I think there are many reasons and many combinations of reasons at any one place and for any one person. But what I really hope for is that people think about why old places matter to them and their importance to every community. I hope this information will give you some ideas to use in communicating the possibilities for people for making people's lives better through old places as we try to achieve the smart growth principle of strengthening existing communities. As I go through this PowerPoint, please be thinking about why old places matter to you and to the communities in which you work. So why do old places matter? Why are they good for people? What difference does it make if we keep and reuse old buildings? 
I'm not going to have time to talk to you today about all the reasons that I wrote about. I'm going to talk to you about the reasons that I think are most relevant to the work that I think you do. And Mike and Don will also talk about the reasons they think old places matter to our communities. Many of these ideas are deeper explorations of what I think you might call a strong sense of place. What is it that gives people a strong sense of place? It's the physical attributes of the place, but it's also how people attach themselves to place. These ideas are informed by research in place attachment, place identity, and environmental psychology. Now please bear with me as we take a deeper dive into some of the reasons people attach themselves to place, and to old places in particular. I'd like to begin with the idea of continuity. Old places give people a sense of continuity. In a world that's constantly changing, old places provide people with a sense of being part of a continuum that's necessary for them to be psychologically and emotionally healthy. Maria Lewicka, an environmental psychologist, wrote that the majority of authors agree the development of emotional bonds with places is a prerequisite of psychological balance and good adjustment, and that it helps to overcome identity crises and gives people the sense of stability they need in the ever-changing world. One of the most common places where we sense continuity is school buildings. This is Caldwell Station School in Huntersville, North Carolina, the upper right uh, photograph where my father went to school, and which serves as a community preschool today. We see the importance of continuity when the continuity between people and place is broken. The church on the left is Palmer Chapel, where people forcibly removed from, from their homes to form the Great Smoky Mountains National Park continue to come back for an annual reunion of descendants. And on the right is Matera, Italy, where people were forcibly removed theoretically for better, safer, and more sanitary housing. The damage of these forced removals resonates generations later. I ponder the long-term impact of urban renewal, which broke people from their places. The damage is long-lasting. Old places give people a sense of continuity in an ever-changing world. Old places help us remember. The architect Mary Donati tells her granddaughter, old buildings are like memories you can touch. Memory is an essential part of consciousness. Without memory, we're hardly ourselves. We've seen this in how we react to people who have Alzheimer's or other conditions where they lose their memory. Their identity is partially erased. And there is, as the geographers Stephen Holscher and Derek Alderman say, an inextricable link between memory and place. People anchor their divergent memories in place. There are two aspects of memory in place, individual memory, and here I use the example of the Cafe Reggio in New York, which I frequented, frequented when I was in my 20s, and collective memory, which is a collective societal sense of memory, such as the memory of the march on Washington. Old places serve as mnemonic aids that trigger memory and allow people to measure themselves and assess their lives. Buildings themselves may also embed memories that are not fully known by current inhabitants. On the right is a building in Trastevere, Rome, that's now used as a restaurant, Spirito Divino, but because of its form and a carved Hebrew letter on the column on the second floor, it carries within it the memory of being a synagogue before there was even a Jewish ghetto in Rome. The idea of memory is a strong aspect of how people become attached to place. Memories will survive without the place, but they won't prove as durable or as flexible when that vortex of memory, that mnemonic aid, the old place, is gone. Old buildings embody our identity. People have long recognized the link between place and identity. James Marston Fitch at Columbia University wrote that preservation affords the opportunity for the citizens to regain a sense of identity with their own origins, of which they have often been robbed by the sheer process of urbanization. Psychologists, sociologists, philosophers, and architectural theorists all study the relationship between place and identity. Most would agree that Place is inextricably linked with the development and maintenance of continuity of self. 
There are those who even theorize that identity and place are inseparable, that people are always in and of place, that life itself begins and ends place. Our sense of identity with place is not static, however. It changes over time. We may form identities with different places. And here I show the church where I was raised, um, to which my family has long ties, and my great-grandfather's house in the upper right. But I've also formed attachments with other places, the Chapel Hill, the DuPont Circle, and with the American Academy in Rome, shown in the lower right-hand corner. Old places embody our identity. When a place of identity is lost, it can have devastating effects on people, reactions akin to grief. As we think of fostering distinctive, attractive communities with a strong sense of place, old places that embody our identity are key. Old places embody our civic, state, national, and universal identity. Independence Hall, shown here, and countless other places embody the history and principles of the United States. But old buildings embody civic identity in most communities in America and throughout the world. From a county courthouse to a public library or old market building, these are the places that people think embody their identity as a community. There are also places that form part of our universal identity, our identity as humans. We felt this idea when the giant Buddhas at Bamiyan were destroyed, or more recently, the places destroyed by ISIS. These are parts of our world that belong to all of us. Old places are parts of our collective identity and are key aspects of what make our communities distinctive and with a strong sense of place. Old places are places where people learn. It's a traditional function of historic sites throughout the history of preservation, as shown here by Old Salem, the upper left, and President Lincoln's cottage, the lower photograph, in Washington, D.C., where Lincoln spent his summers during the Civil War. And the learning that happens here can be more vivid and memorable because it engages all of our senses. It's full body immersion. I want to emphasize one aspect of old places and learning from a smart growth perspective. There are things we learn simply because of the survival of a place. On the right is the Quan Tai Temple in Mendocino, California, built in 1854 by Chinese immigrants. As one of the Chinese descendants put to us on a visit, what we learn from this place and the fact that it survives is that, as she put it, we were here. Old places matter because they're unparalleled places to learn, and these places are key landmarks that make our community distinctive and with a strong sense of place, not to mention the fact that they drive tourism. Creativity. Old places stir creativity. People are inspired by old places to compose, write, and do other creative work. Richard Florida noted that the creative class is drawn to old places, one of the key ingredients of create, creative places, according to Florida, is authenticity. He says, authenticity, as in real buildings, real people, real history, is key. Recent studies show that people's imaginations are spurred by old places. In one study that sought to isolate what difference age makes in the built environment, the study concluded that people's imaginations were spurred more by the old place. The study actually compared a new urbanist development with a comparable old community. Old places also transmit artistic legacies, as well as having their own distinctive character. In the lower photo is RCA Studio A in Nashville, Tennessee, where Elvis recorded, where Dolly Parton recorded Jolene, and which was recently saved through the efforts of Ben Folds so that it can continue as a place of creativity with its distinctive acoustics and musical legacy. As the American economy increasingly turns to creative work, this may be an increasingly important reason to keep and reuse old buildings, as Mike will discuss more. Architecture. Old architecture is a key aspect of distinctive places, and I think most of us readily acknowledge this idea. We see it in these main streets in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, shown here. But there are deeper reasons architecture matters to people. John Ruskin, the 19th century architect, said that old buildings embody the spirit of their age and the hand and spirit of the maker is present in the building. 
People appreciate the craftsmanship and art of old architecture. Yuhani Palazma, the Finnish architect and theorist, points out in the recent Forum Journal that architecture is also important because it places us in the con continuum of time. When we see the pyramids, we're immediately placed on the continuum of time. I would suggest that this is no less true for the old architecture of our cities and towns. Simply the presence of these buildings places people in time and gives them a sense of orientation. Old places are beautiful. Beauty remains at the heart of why, old pe why people care about old places. Yet despite the fact that preservation is sometimes called aesthetic regulation, we don't often expressly ground our decisions in the idea of beauty. This is for many reasons, the subjective nature of beauty, the difficulty of defining it, the loaded cultural aspects of beauty, or the fact that it may be considered frivolous or expendable. Yet beauty is still something that delights, moves, and satisfies people. A study by the Commission for Architecture and the Built Environment found that beauty is a deeply positive experience contributing to happiness and well-being. Beauty has financial as well as psychological and sociological benefits. The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia published a report in 2008 that analyzed the financial benefits of beautiful places. The definition of beautiful cities used in the report expressly included a determination of places that were historic through listing in the National Register of Historic Places. The authors recognized that leisure visitors and permanent residents were attracted to places because of the area's special traits, such as proximity to ocean, scenic views, historic districts, architectural beauty, and cultural and recreational opportunities. Old places are a key aspect of what makes our communities beautiful. As Alan Powers said in Beauty, A Short History, preservation was far more powerful as a means of restoring ideas of beauty in the public realm than architecture and planning of new buildings has ever been on their own. It was also a means of engaging a citizen population in debate and decision making about their environment. I think it's important for people to live in beautiful communities every day, to be surrounded by beauty, and for it to be accessible to everyone, rich and poor. It's good for people, and we shouldn't be ashamed to talk about it and demand it, as many community leaders did during the City Beautiful movement more than a century ago. Old places matter because they are, or because they may become, beautiful. Sustainability. The greenest building is the building that's already built, as the architect Carl Elefante said. Mike will talk about this more, but I wanted to share my short list of the reasons why. The reuse of existing buildings results in land conservation, habitat preservation, open space preservation, reduced fuel consumption, avoidance of adverse impacts from the extraction and transportation of new materials, avoidance of new landfill material, and, and also benefits from the positive environmental passive design of old places. In addition, there are those who suggest that a community that has grown organically over time is itself a distinct ecology that we should seek to nurture. Old places matter because using and reusing them is environmentally sustainable. Economics. Old places matter because they support a sound, sustainable, and vibrant economy. Don and Mike will both talk about this more, but I wanted to share one key thought. While I don't think we should reduce the many powerful qualities of old places to simply an economic calculation, dozens of studies have proven that historic preservation is good for the economy. Old buildings attract tourists, talent and investment, service incubators for small businesses, create jobs and good wages, and revitalize neighborhoods and communities. Just imagine if these economic studies could capture the full value old places give people, the sense of identity and belonging, the awe of beauty, the creativity and imagination. Then their value would be incalculable. community. I'd like to end with a reason that may seem most directly relevant to the smart growth audience. Old places foster community. 
But how do old places, old buildings, old cities and towns foster community? What particular role do old places play? The writer Wendell Berry says, a community is the mental and spiritual condition of knowing that the place is shared. Old places foster community by giving people a sense of shared identity through landmarks, history, memory, and stories, by having the attributes that foster community, such as distinctive character and walkability, and by serving as shared places where people meet and gather. A great example of the way old places foster community is how we experience post offices. Local post offices, often architecturally distinctive and in the center of town, serve as both meeting places and community landmarks of identity, like this one shown in La Jolla, California, in the lower left. For more than two decades, planners, academics, preservationists, and everyday people have lamented the way sprawl has destroyed the American landscape, diminished the distinctiveness of places, and eviscerated the vitality of older towns and cities, essentially how it has destroyed community. New urbanists promote placemaking, the design of new places to foster a distinctiveness of place and a sense of community. Developers of new places advertise walkability, design, front porches, alleys, garages behind the houses, open space, squares, and a mix of retail, residential, and workplaces, the very things that many old places already have. These are intended to allow people to interact with each other, to avoid getting in their car, and therefore create the conditions that foster community. I applaud these efforts. Yet something critically important is often overlooked, and that is the idea that the development of a real community takes time. Community develops through the interaction between people and place over time. We cannot build a community. We can only foster the conditions in which communities can grow and thrive. If community is shared experience expressed in terms of a common physical place, old places are crucial. Old places are where people, time, and place intertwine to form community. Old places matter because they foster community. Through this exploration into why old places matter, I've become even more convinced that old places matter deeply to people and to society, and for more reasons than I thought. Old places are necessary for our psychological and emotional health. They ground us with a sense of belonging. They foster community. They inspire us in creativity. They soothe us with beauty and sacredness. They help us know who we are. They also are sustainable both environmentally and financially. One of the greenest things that we can do is to continue to use and reuse our existing built environments. Now, as we hear from Mike and Don on economics and sustainability, I would ask you to be thinking about why old places matter to you and to your communities. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, you explore several dimensions of how old places connect to people. What are the measures or evidence, objective or anecdotal, that you see as determining if an old place matters to people? Thank you, John. Um, that's a great question. First of all, as I've done this writing, I've discovered a tremendous number of um, studies and information that I think is not readily available to either the preservation community or the smart growth community. Um, there's, an, there's a great article in the forum journal that's available on the website. Um, by a guy named Jeremy Welsh that goes through the existing status of psychological and um, sociological studies about old places and what's known and what's not known. If you're talking about an individual place, I think one of the, the anecdotal things that we see is that uh, when a place is getting ready to be lost or demolished, we see an uprising of support from people who want to see the place preserved. So sometimes this comes about just by virtue of, um, of people expressing uh, how much they care about a place and 
uh, protesting its demolition and advocating for saving it. So um, I don't think there's any one answer to that question. I think there are lots of answers, and I invite you to look at both my blog post and the Jeremy Wells um, article for more information about that. Okay, well, thank you. And um, before we move on, are there any um, closing uh, statements you'd like to make? Well, I'd just like to emphasize that, again, that I think there's so many reasons that old places matter to people that it's one of the reasons it's difficult to get a handle on, on how much it matters. Um, I've gone through a number of them today, um, and I, I, again, invite you to take a look at the other essays. Um, but these reasons overlap. There are lots of them present at any one time, at any one place, and they resonate with people differently. Um, and, and it becomes difficult for people to articulate. So I hope this webinar and the information that we've provided will make it easier for people to express why old places matter to them. Thank you again, and we appreciate uh, your talk.